Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie in D.C. today meeting with U.S. Senators as Canada prepares for Trump 2.0. And she's already got a point person to deal with. Donald Trump announcing his pick late last night for the next U.S. ambassador to Canada, Pete Huckstra. He served as ambassador to the Netherlands during Trump's first term. And prior to that, he was a U.S. representative for Michigan for 18 years, notably serving as chair of the House Intelligence Committee. The front bench is back to talk a little bit about what that might mean for this government dealing with the incoming president. Let's uh, bring them back. Brian Gallant, Gary Dewar, and Gary Marr. Uh, I'll start with Gary Dewar. As, as a former uh, ambassador to the U.S., what's your read on this pick? I think it's you know, you can take one piece of good news. Bruce Heyman was saying earlier uh, uh, to me that we're one of the first ones that was announced by the president. Well, it, it's very good news. Uh, I think having somebody from Michigan is really, really helpful for Canada. We have literally billions of dollars of two-way trade between Michigan and, and Canada. And, of course, there's no greater symbol of that two-way trade than the Gordie Howe Bridge that's going to be opening uh, in uh, 2025, and uh, which will carry the, the billions of dollars of trade and two-way trade. Uh, this was supported by a Republican governor, Governor Schneider. It was promoted by a Canadian prime minister, Stephen Harper, who had, it's nice to have a hockey historian in place to promote the name of Gordie Howe. Uh, they'll be happy in Saskatchewan and across Canada, the name, and uh, in Windsor and, and, of course, Detroit. So I think it's good to have that uh, individual there, uh, a border uh, representative, uh, a person experienced on cross-border uh, advantages and disadvantages and, and benefits, I think is really, really valuable. And uh, as I say, uh, I'm glad it's a border uh, political figure. Uh, he's obviously got the, uh, uh, the attention of the, the president, and that's extremely important. And having a quick decisive uh, nomination is also very, very important for Canada. So there's no gap. Because this thing, by the way, Vassi, I was in Washington yesterday. This is moving. This trade issue is moving a lot faster than really? people think. And uh, it's not, uh, you know, I know we're going to take the, uh, the band out of the garage and it did a great job in the last set of negotiations, but this is a whole different ball game we're dealing with right now. And there's a lot of serious potential unilateral action that may come from the administration. So it's good to have somebody be able to articulate what that means for citizens on both sides of the border and, and articulate it to the person who's ultimately going to make the decisions. That's the, the president. Can I just ask really quickly as a very quick follow-up, based on your visit there, how, do you think the threat of tariffs being slapped on imminently is there? I, I definitely believe it may come after the uh, swearing in of the president. He's technically, I think that's January 20th. But they are definitely looking at unilateral action. Uh, it's starting, it's aimed mostly at China, uh, a little bit at Europe, uh, but the issue of state-owned enterprises in Mexico owned by China, that's why, it's, it, that's why it's so important that Canada sides with the United States on that issue, not sends Mexico to the sideline, but sides with the United States on that specific issue. I hear a lot of people saying, we want a bilateral agreement, but I think the issue is, do we yeah. agree with the United States on state-owned enterprises with China? we got to get ahead of this. This thing is moving faster than people think. Gary brings me, uh, other Gary, uh, to, to actually the thing I wanted to ask both you and Brian about, because uh, I can also lean on your vast experience representing Alberta in Washington. I'm going to play a quick clip about uh, uh, the Prime Minister's comments today when it comes to Mexico, because... Yesterday, Premier Ford said it's, you know, there's consensus among premiers across the country to cut them out, to go bilateral with the United States. Here's what the Prime Minister said today in response to that. We're leaving all doors open because my job is and always is, uh, always will be, to stand up for Canadian workers, to stand up for the Canadian economy, to stand up for Canadian interests. Ideally, we do that as a united North American uh, market. But uh, pending decisions and choices that Mexico has made, we may have to look at other options. I thought, Gary, uh, Gary Meyer, that, that statement was pretty remarkable to leave the door that open at this juncture. Uh, it does sound like a lot of qualifications on what his position really is on this. I think uh, there are many Canadian premiers who have already come to the conclusion that 
uh, when Donald Trump signed the uh, Kuzma Agreement, or USMCA, depending on what side of the border you're on, I don't think it was anticipated that China would be moving an enormous amount of uh, manufacturing into states in Mexico like Nuevo de Leon and somehow bypassing uh, the, uh, the, you know, the trade issues between China and the United States and instead using uh, a North American trilateral agreement to move goods into the U.S. that would compete with American goods. And so I, I think that, um, you know, a number of premiers, especially uh, Premier Smith, uh, and I think I've heard Premier Canoe talk about this and Premier Ford, uh, maybe it's time to leave behind Mexico uh, because their issues are so different. Now, on uh, the ambassador, I think it is a good news piece that he was assigned so quickly uh, to this by the president-elect. I think last time uh, it took several months, if, as I recall, before Ambassador Kraft was appointed uh, uh, ambassador in the Trump first administration. And so there's a huge difference between the Trump first administration and, and this second administration, he's a lot better prepared. He's got a game plan. He's moving forward on it. As Gary says, mm -hmm. the trade piece is moving a lot faster than people would have anticipated. Uh, and this is especially true compared to his first term as president, where it took a long time to get, you know, the kind of appointments that he's already um, whipped through so quickly. And he's got policy that is actually ready to go. Uh, he's really spent some number of months or years um, in between uh, his, uh, his, his time as president uh, to be able to be ready this time around. And I think things will start to move quickly. I agree that uh, the current ambassador appointee is, uh, uh, is probably good for Canada, not only because um, he... Um, you know, he is very familiar with two-way trade between Canada and the United States. I would also say that because he was the chair of the, the House Intelligence Committee, that may give us some mm. indicia as to the kind of issues that he will raise uh, as ambassador while in Ottawa. Uh, but the fact that he was born in the Netherlands, uh, where he previously served as ambassador, may also be a positive thing. Of course, there's a great relationship between uh, the Netherlands and Canada by reason of what was done by Canada during the Second yeah. World War. And that may, in fact, be a great advantage to Canada as well, having Ambassador Hoekstra right. take that role. Yeah, good point. Good connection there for sure. Uh, Brian, uh, my apologies. I just have a minute left. So the last word goes to you. Yeah, I think on, on the ambassador, the, 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 the incoming ambassador, I would. Uh, I agree with the points made. The fact that he's from Michigan understands the two-way trade helpful. I I'm not sure to what extent he's going to be holding any sort of cards uh, to make decisions, but it's obviously great if the person that's uh, briefing the president and his administration uh, understands the issues. The only thing I would say, though, is, uh, yeah, I'd like to think the fact that we have uh, have indication of who the ambassador will be in Canada early sh is a positive. I'd like to think that. But you could also flip it and say... Trump isn't really focused on all the positives and saying, I really like Canada and it's great, so let's right. appoint it. It might be, we got some issues there, I want somebody right away. So we we, we shouldn't read too much into that because um, that does worry me a little bit. On Mexico, I think we're actually in a pretty good spot only because if you're Mexico, you're now realizing that this is starting to gain momentum, the idea of being iced out, and they might start to say, we got to step up on this issue and, and and be more aligned with Canada and the U.S. So I actually think this is kind of working out for our negotiating advantage. So, so um, good job, Canada. We shall, we shall see. Okay, thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Brian Gallant, Gary Dewar, and Gary Marr. Our takeaway is next.